All right, everyone, it's time to talk about the new shilling tactic that I've noticed being deployed. It's certainly on, uh, in swing on my channel as well as others and on other sites, although YouTube, uh, it's become sort of the spine of the alt media. YouTube and the associated sites of people who have uh, garnered large audiences on YouTube. Sometimes the former comes after the latter, sometimes vice versa. Sometimes they were already sort of an e-celeb and then they move to YouTube, that becomes popular. Sometimes they get bigger on YouTube and then they sort of export their, uh, their message elsewhere. That's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm on Twitter now and Facebook begrudgingly. Eventually I'll have my own website and then I have, of course, my literary blog, um, my main blog, which is just sort of the one associated with my brand. There's a new shilling tactic. Uh, for about a month there, the main tactic was let's Photoshop crude images of people who happen to uh, uh, be worthwhile non-corporate social commentators. At the time, uh, one of the shilling tactics was to try to boil it down to left versus right, which was never actually true. Uh, like restricted mode. If you looked at H.A. Goodman's channel, he's a Bernie bro. Half his material was gone. Other left-wing YouTubers. Uh, the fact that it aff affected the right more, I think, is a sampling bias on our part, perhaps, in noticing it because they're simply on YouTube. As opposed to some other sites, a lot of the larger sort of alt-media commentators, they happen to be right-wing. They're like a paleocon, ANCAP, they're libertarian, civic or ethnic nationalist, something like that. And they say they probably outnumber you know, significant leftist groups, probably two or three to one. So that really explains it on that end. Uh, but it did certainly affect people who are uh, more off-hook alt-media, uh, as in they're not controlled by a corporation. They're not being told what to say by Goldman Sachs or by uh, World News Corp or, or CNN or something like that. They've got independence. They can cover what they want, say what they want, analyze it how they want, and they stand against, like, the global shit. Anyway, there's a new shilling tactic. Now, uh, riddle me this. Um, to those of you who have noticed the massive uptick in the number of self-proclaimed Nazis on my channel and elsewhere, do you think that it's coincidental that they all uh, primarily showed up in large numbers after YouTube's uh, debacle there with its restricted mode, demonetization, and so forth? The answer is no. It's not a coincidence. It's a shilling tactic. What they're trying to do is they're trying to perturb people in the alt media into going, you know, ape shit and starting to ramble about real, real edgy issues. Essentially, the, the strategy is uh, you try to convince some YouTuber with a significant audience. If they're on the left, the strategy is a little different. Uh, I'll have to get into that in the future and, and perhaps analyze it more. But for anyone who's perceived of as on the right, when they talk about social commentary, they're, they're a libertarian, civic nationalist, whatever. The idea is uh, groups of people who are being paid to shitpost, uh, they are leftists, they work for CTR, ShareBlue, Media Matters, something like that. They'll show up and they'll try to convince that individual, oh, well, you're so great, you should red pill the masses on Zionism or something. And then if you don't do that because it's just not your MO, like my channel, it's just you know current events commentary, the occult MREs and stuff, it really doesn't have anything to do with that sort of side of YouTube content. And they'll say, oh, well, they're, they're a cuck. Or even uh, they'll claim that you're a Jew, actually, which, by the way, I'm not. Uh, I'm a pagan occultist. I'm mostly of Anglo-Saxon origin uh, with some Slovak blood and possibly some Native American, but uh, no Jewish blood. Not that it fucking matters, but at the same time, uh, it's essentially defamation. The idea is when these shills are talking to groups of people who are on the right, they'll call you a cuck. If they're talking to social justice warriors, they'll call you a Nazi. And the same people with, with different accounts do the same thing. You can study the language used, you know that it's mostly scripted. That drags in additionally some people who are just there to troll. And then, I mean, they're not shills, they're just trolls. Or people who are ethnic nationalists, but they're also confused. Like, uh, they don't seem to notice that there's a little bit of a difference between how some of these people talk in the comments areas. And, and magically never get banned for it. I wonder why, who's shielding them from uh, being banned. And the banter that you hear from actual ethnic nationalists, you think of reality calls, red ice, something like that, Ramsey Paul. It's two totally different things. It's totally and utterly different. The idea that ethnic nationalism <clears throat> is about, oh, well, you know, stomp out minorities and Semites into the ovens and all this stuff, 
That's like LARPing stuff. That's like the Avalian crap. Now, Avalian herself, I don't even believe, is a national socialist or an ethnic nationalist or whatever. You take one look at the Twitter handle, and it's like now a bunch of pro-communist rhetoric. Well, why the fuck do you think that is? It's an attempt to garner an audience of actual, like, nationalists and convince them, oh, no, you need to go off and attack capitalism because it's so evil. Now, it's an obvious shilling strategy. Any fucking idiot can see that that's what's going on. At the same time, they'll pretend to be genuine in their beliefs so that they can turn around and say, oh, no, you're the one who's shilling. You know, Sticks Hexenhammer is, uh, he doesn't make enough videos about how he supposedly hates some minority group, therefore he's a cuck. Well, that's never been what my channel's about. I'm sitting here analyzing current events and news. I'm convinced that the world's probably going to enter a, a stage of World War III nuclear fire anyway. Why the hell would I care about that issue? It's not exciting to me. If you want somebody who's going to sit there and rant video after video, it'll be on the same topic and it'll have something to do with LARPing that he's, uh, that he's uh, you know, the leader of Stormfront or whatever. Why don't you go and subscribe to Brother Nathaniel? That would be my advice to anyone who genuinely has these beliefs. To those who are shilling, you must think I was born yesterday. You must be very, very new here. I've been on YouTube for more than a decade. I'm not taken in by your bait. And I'm not here to prove a point to anyone either. Most of the people that join my channel, the, the shills will try to say, oh, most of the people on your channel, they're like hardcore national socialist or so. You're going to lose your whole audience if you don't start to, you're, you're just a cuck, so you're going to lose all your audience. It's not who poured onto my channel. I got leftists on my channel too. People poured onto my channel because I was right regarding the elections for months and months while 99% of those trying to analyze it were totally fucking wrong. And some people reported to me uh, thereafter, oh yeah, I made like thousands of bucks betting on this because I thought you were right. Well, yeah, you probably did better than people who bet based on what Nate Silver said. That's why people are on my channel. They're getting me unfiltered. They're not getting corporate media. They're not getting media co-opted by any organization. I'm standalone and I am completely self-employed. I'm at leisure to say and do what I want online. My income's it's coming from a bunch of books and stuff. I'm not even worried about like the Patreon angle. People saying, oh yeah, you know, report someone's Patreon page. It, it wouldn't mean anything. Just fucking make a new one. It's uh, the shills want, essentially, this is the plan. Their current plan, uh, operative, their operative strategy, is to go onto the channels of independent content creators with significant audiences and try to get them to make material that can then result in the mass demonetization of their videos or their censoring through restricted mode, something like that. So if a channel is not already in those two categories, mine is like half and half. If, if I look, I'm, I'm a YouTube partner, I just don't have monetization actually enabled on anything. If I look at the list of videos, about half of them are capable of being monetized. That is, it's not the entire channel that would be. These people, I don't even think, are aware of the fact that I don't use ad revenue. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't care enough to try shilling here. As far as the side of restricted mode, it's the same story. Half my content is like restricted mode is on uh, and it disappears. The other half is it's still watchable, like you can access the channel. And I'm already heavily censored in all sorts of parts of the world. People in Germany and Poland and Italy and some of these other countries, they can't even get on my channel. They can see my material, they can subscribe to me on a video, but they can't peruse my channel at their leisure. They'd have to peruse like a playlist made by somebody else in order to actually browse my material. Like I, could, I should probably have a website just to embed my own material so that it can be accessible in some of these parts of the world. Now, I didn't get heavily censored by cucking out and never saying anything worthwhile. I'm heavily censored in these countries because I speak the truth and I'm too popular for these countries to want me be, to be able to speak to their people. If I were to just sit there like Brother Nathaniel and ramble about the same thing day in and day out, it would be so old, so boring, and such a niche audience that would be paying attention to me. I wouldn't be a threat to globalism. I wouldn't be a threat to some corporate media entity. They wouldn't care. They wouldn't care. My audience would be, you know, a tenth of what it is right now, probably, if I were to do that. So, therefore, I'm not taken in by the, sh by the bait that's put forth by the show. I know full well what's going on. You know how I know? Because I study propaganda. I use propaganda. I use it to try to make things more free, to try to improve people's lives. Most people, though, when they use it, they're doing it on, they're not doing it for themselves. They're doing it for some corporate entity. 
or some establishment political movement. Well, too bad. You can sit there. I, I believe in absolute free speech on my common areas. If somebody's an actual national socialist and they're saying national socialist stuff in the comments, they're not going to get censored. I've had people claim offsite, oh, he banned me for, you know, X, Y, and Z. Bullshit. Absolute, utter falsity. You did not get banned from my channel for inconvenient or edgy political speech under any way, shape, or form. You either thought you got banned because YouTube's filter kicked in and it had nothing to do with me, or you got banned for spamming and being an asshat to me personally or to one of my subscribers. That's why you got banned. You didn't get banned for saying, oh, my Hitler or something like that. People do that all the time. I'm not banning them. I don't even ban communists from my channel. They're sitting there talking about class uprising, how great Marx was. I completely disagree with them. They're not getting banned either. Bullshit. You didn't get banned from my channel for something as innocuous as, as telling a, a racially charged joke. It's just not going to happen. YouTube might filter your material. Take it up with them. Take it up with the fact that they have an active filtering system that content creators can't even turn off on their own. That's your problem. That has nothing to do with any action on my part. I can look at my ban list and I can tell you why most of those people are banned. Nine times out of ten they were spamming the same comment on a dozen fucking videos. Usually some permutation of turn to Jesus Christ or something. Most of these people were banned for trying to proselytize. They weren't banned for anything political in nature. So I know what the shills are doing. It's very, very obvious. They're not just doing it to me. They do it to people on Molyneux's channel. They do it on Sargon's channel. They do it on Black Pigeon Speaks and Paul Joseph Watson. They ramble about it on Infowars. They do it to everyone. And anyone who's not controlled by some lamestream globalized corporation. And here's how you can tell the really good commentators and the bad ones. If there are a bunch of shills there trying to get them to destroy their own material, they're probably one of the good ones. If they're leaving the material alone, like hmm, Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, any pundit that appears on them, any lamestream sort of establishment, you know, so-called alt-political figure, someone who was in politics 20 years ago, if they're not getting shilled, chances are they have nothing interesting to say. I take it as a badge of honor that I do. When I see you, I go on 4chan. I see someone there claiming that I'm like, oh, he's actually Jewish. He sold out. That's why he won't ramble constantly and unendingly about Zionism or something. I take it as a badge of honor that somebody would take the time to try to shill me like that. It means that what I'm doing is working. They're hot under the collar about me because they know I'm telling people the truth and they can't do anything about it. They're like, oh, oh, these people, they're paying attention to Molyneux and Sargon and Styx and Varg and people like that, which means they're probably not watching TV at the time. That's less money for my CNN. MSNBC, how will Rachel Maddow afford her fourth home if she doesn't get that clickbait in? That's why they're upset about it. And it's entertainment too. It's not just political and social commentary. I've already gone over it's not just left or right. It's nothing to do with that because the establishment, it isn't left or right. It's just corporatist. So they don't care about that. They also don't care whether it's just innocuous entertainment. Look at what they did to PewDiePie. Doesn't even talk about politics. They tried to brand him the next Adolf Hitler. That's how this all got kick-started in the first place. And at the time, I stated it was his strategy to get more subscribers. It worked, and I was right. And that's exactly what happened. That's why he kept doing it. Unfortunately for him, he stretched too far. He then enabled these groups to attack him. However, he then built a new operative strategy. He fought back by getting his own subscribers to attack the Wall Street Journal. That sort of shut the others up because I think they don't want to deal with tens of millions of pissed off PewDiePie fans. For those of us with smaller audiences, the more in key you are, the more able you are to understand propaganda, then the better you tend to be at dispelling it. The better you are at inoculating people against lies. The better you are at inoculating people against lies, the more you're going to get shilled. So when I go around and I see a huge differential on the number of people who are trying to declare like, like one person a cock or a sellout or you know some part of a secret globalist conspiracy, and then, and then someone else who is much more likely to get branded those same things by people who are fairly obviously scripted, I say there's a difference between how close to the truth these individuals are. Seek and ye shall, shall find. Go back through. Uh, look at the views of people and then try to take a rough estimate 
of how hard they're getting shilled. And uh, you have to build a ratio according to how large their audience is, by the way. Take a look at that. You'll find out who's telling you the truth. It's the easiest way to do it. If you know anything about linguistics at all, if you can tell who's using a script, it's very, very, very simple. All you have to do is study linguistic anthropology, basic level course. That's all you have to do, that and maybe basic psychology. It's really that simple. Most people, they operate on such a low wavelength when it comes to such things, and be taken in by those very simplistic strategy. Now, you, all you need to do is fool like 90% of people. You don't need to fool them all. Lincoln understood that too. Uh, the corporate media knows it's not going to get everyone back on board watching their fucking boring content. But if they can crush a few people here and there, if they can get them demonetized, make their life more difficult, suppress them just a little, get a few more videos set to restricted mode, maybe even get a channel taken down because they, they really do go crazy, then they're happy with that. That's uh, a lot of people potentially gravitating towards their YouTube streaming bundle or whatever the hell they're trying to sell next. Their Bill O'Reilly mugs, their Rachel Maddow pup tent sales or something like that. That's what they want. Most of these people are shills. They are paid to post this shit. And if they're pretending, by the way, to be like some total virulent leftist, it's the same thing. Most actual self-proclaimed liberals aren't so fucking far out there that they actually think that they need to chop off their own limbs to fit in. Oh, I'm a trans amputee. I'm also fat positive. Look at my, my gaping hemorrhoids. I'm so beautiful and stuff. That's a rarity. You'll find people that are like that. They're few and far between. Just like there are few and far between actual individuals who say, yeah, we're going to stomp down the minorities. Yeah, Hitler every day. Very, very rare. Most of the national socialists, LARP, most of the ethnic nationalists don't fit in with that crowd anyway, and they just want to make their, their web broadcast, make a fucking podcast, tell some jokes at leftist expense. That's all they do. I've gone on shows with these people. They don't sit, they're not the ones sitting there saying, Sticks Hexenhammer sold out to some, some Jewish activist or something. That's a bunch of LARPing crap taken from shilling. Literally, these people are paid to post this crap. It's correct the record. It's Media Matters. It's MoveOn.org. It's all of these groups. It's ShareBlue. Those are the ones doing that. You think it doesn't... Yeah, they're just going to... The shilling happens all the time on TV. It happens all the time on radio. But trust us, they would never attempt to do that online. They, you know, let alone the fact that that's where the main audience of the world media is. With all of the most talented upstart alt-media groups. No, they would totally never shill people online. It's just a conspiracy theory. What would be in it from them, for them other than billions and billions of dollars, massive attention, and 10 time higher cost efficiency? What could possibly be in it for the corporate media or for Hollyweird or any of these other groups that are seeking to crack through online because they got caught with their pants down and left behind and nobody likes them anymore? Yeah, what, what could possibly be in it? For, I wonder what. It couldn't be those billions of dollars. They wouldn't want that. They'll, they'll be just fine with the TV era that's slowly dying off. Bullcrap. These people uh, are, are either LARPers or shills, generally speaking, plus some trolls there just to bother people. By the way, if it's just troll, I don't really care. It's not offending me. It gives me the ability to make another video on the topic of propaganda. But I'm not taken in by the bait. Uh, it's, it's very, very poorly made, generally speaking. That's about all. Peace out.